us here. I can feel with every breath. It's dissolving every fear. The love in here expands to so it can be the presence of God's light and love that flows through you and me. The love in Lighting the Flames of Faith, a call to service. We perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths, all sentient beings, come from the one great universal presence, which we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion.
We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light the candle for Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as practitioner Kim Province lights the last candle, let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. And please join me in prayer. Let's come together and know that there is only one life, and that life is God's life, and that life is my life right here and right now. I know that this life and this power and this presence is all-loving, all-knowing, and always right where I am, right here in this room. And I know that this power, this presence expresses itself so abundantly and beautifully as each one here. For we are one with it and we are one with each other. And knowing this truth, I declare that this service is absolutely divine. It is an experience of rebirth, an experience of renewal for each one here. By means of the music, the message, fellowship, the love and the connection that is shared in this service. And each one is raised to a higher level of consciousness and leaves here with such a feeling of rebirth, a renewal of self, a renewal of that Christ consciousness that is within. And so I give thanks for this time together and for each one here. And so I let my word go. I know it is done. And we stay together. And so it is. And now, Reverend Dr. Heather Don Clark. Now, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay, Verizon always works. So as I was saying, happy Easter. And welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Capistrano Valley, where, as usual, we will explore ideas that you can use in your life as tools for transformation. And when you transform your life, the world is a better place. It becomes a world that works for everyone. So welcome. Welcome home. I'm happy that you cho chose to join us this morning. Um, I'd like to introduce the people who will be with me on the platform this morning. So you've already met my platform assistant who has triple duty this morning, and that is Reverend Karen Allen. And joining her later on will be Karen Meyer. I saw her come in. There she is. Our guest vocalists are the Jewel Tones Choir, and they're that big group of people back there. Our fabulous band, Diane King Van, our music and choir director. Ed Cusby on guitar. David Page on drums. And Bill Tixon on bass. And, and playing for Diane when she's directing choir, Jules Vogel, our guest accompanist. Thank you, Rick. And now our song leaders for the morning are going to come up and um, lead us in the first song of the morning, which is I Am Enough, a Rick Dale song. You are. <laughs> Don't 
around you, not everyone in the building, just the people around you, and then we'll declare our principles. Please be seated. We're going to declare our principles together. Please join me. I believe in God, the one creative intelligence operating through the universe and operating throughout my entire being, now and always. I believe this perfect spirit operates upon a law of mine and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect creative intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to produce health, abundance, and life in my body and total life experience. I use it now. And, and so it is. Very nice. 
I'd like to acknowledge those of you who are in service today or have been this week. Would you please stand? So we can give you a lot, a lot, a lot of love. A special subgroup is our, our practitioners. So if our pr practitioners would remain standing, practitioners are trained in the art and science of affirmative prayer. If you want to transform your life, make an appointment to see one of these people or stop by one of the tables or the um, tranquility room after service, and they will be at, in service for you. Would those people that are in service today please remain standing? So holding the high watch, we have, I think it's Faith Mackey, but he can't see for sure. Faith Mackey, we have Kim Proven, we have Jeannie, Hounds Jeannie Hounshell, and coming to read the affirmation, we have Marlene Cutler. Good morning. So, I guess you'll join me on the screen. The affirmation for today is, today I start on something I have been joyfully longing to do. I consciously ask spirit, what shall I do today? And commit to doing it. I now move forward towards living my life Living my joy. It's that easy. And together? Today, I start on something I have been joyfully longing to do. I consciously ask spirit, what shall I do today? And I commit to doing it. I now move forward towards living my joy. It's that easy. And so it is. Thank you, Marlene. This is the time in our service where we get a little quiet. We have a sh very short, brief meditation. And we begin with a chant, and then I'll guide you in a meditation, and then end with the same chant. It's a Allendale chant with spirit. <laughs> Spirit, I am free. With Spirit, I can be. spirit we live, we move, our ha have our being, and bringing that consciousness fully to you. Allow yourself to recognize that you are that chooser that chooses heaven, and you are the point of heaven on earth. Your consciousness 
your choices, your thoughts, your actions, what makes the difference? Whatever heaven, love, joy, looks like to you, let it expand in your heart. Let it expand and grow. The feeling of pure bliss, of complete relaxation, well-being. And then simply allow, make welcome, more of that consciousness, more of that experience in the silence. With spirit I am free With spirit I can be And becoming fully conscious, coming back to your body, back to where you are in the room, and bringing that awareness with you. It is my joy to welcome to the platform the Jewel Tones Choir. Good morning. We're so happy to be here for you today. I'm glad you're with us to hear these beautiful pieces of music that we're going to share with you. This first song is called Deep Peace, and it truly is just a lovely piece of music. And we have an extra treat in that Ken Roebuck will be signing the um, message of the song towards the end of the song. So he'll be over here, and um, please enjoy Deep Peace. Of the warming 
Let's acknowledge them once more. No sense of noise. Thank you, me. Ah. Well. I am. <laughs> I usually move a lot, too. Well, it's kind of like having David still here at the drums. There's always a way. God is so good. Thank you. Thank you. I heard a story about a Sunday school teacher that was asking the Sunday school children if they understood what a resurrection was, what the resurrection was. And one little boy put up his hand and he said, I do, I do. And she said, yes, uh, Johnny, what is it? And he said, well, I'm not exactly sure, but if it lasts more than six hours, you're supposed to call the doctor. And that might be a little sassy for some, some people on Sunday, but what, I, what you need to know is that Easter is much, much older than Jesus' resurrection. That Easter is, is a, a celebration of life that is about the fertility of the planet and about the procreation. And so having a little bit of sex mixed in on a Sunday is a good thing to talk about. So, so anyway, anyway, the, the whole idea, the whole idea of resurrection, the whole idea that the women came to the tomb in the story of Jesus, they came to the tomb expecting to find his body to minister to, and it was gone. The tomb was empty. And not only was the tomb empty, but, but angels said, why are, why are you? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? And for us, for us as metaphysicians, even if we don't believe the historical story 
And boy, are there some different opinions right now about the historical Jesus. You can read from left to right of what someone is very sure or certain it is. And honestly, it doesn't matter to me what is the historical truth. What matters to me is what is the relevance of the story today? It's like I talked about last week, is that if a scripture doesn't have relevance today, even if it's the most famous scripture there is, we shouldn't study it. But it has relevance. It has relevance for two reasons that I can think of. First of all, the whole idea that Jesus was proving that we are not our bodies, that we're greater than our bodies, that our life is eternal, and that that eternal life is a true thing. It's not a wish, a hope, a desire. It's the truth. The other thing, the other thing that is even more practical for us is that we can transform our lives from the dead to absolute vital life. What am I talking about? I'm talking about when we awaken to who we really are spiritually and recognize that there's a power for good in us, that it responds to us. It's, it's the truth of who we are. It is divine love, and it is everywhere present. It's what brought you here this morning. You may have thought you came because your mother wanted you to, or your sister, but the real reason you came was to be reminded of this truth, the truth that no matter what's going on for you right now, no matter how gray it looks, how dismal, how discouraged you may be, that you can reinvent yourself because you're made in the image and likeness of a power that is transcendent. I've been reading a Jean Houston article, and it's a really brilliant article on the mystery of the resurrection, the mystery of the resurrection. And one of the things she says is that Jesus, when he became the Christ, the enlightened one, was transparent to transcendence. Let me say that again. Jesus, as the Christ, became transparent to transcendence. Touch yourself in the heart and repeat after me. I am transparent to transcendence. Doesn't that feel good? The truth is, it's the truth. It's the truth. And what Jean Houston says is the reason that we resonate. So something in your DNA goes, that's the truth. Something deep in you awakens to a spiritual truth of you that you may not have consciously thought about. It's so convenient for us to think that we're our bodies, to think that we're our problems or our experiences or our disappointments or any of that stuff. And no ma matter how much you cried last night, may your tears today be of joy. May they be of hope and infinite possibilities that the life that you have chosen to live is filled with aliveness, with joy, with possibilities, and that you truly came here to be the difference maker. You are the one that makes the difference. No matter whether you, you <laughs> delight people by singing or making dolls or making quilts or writing or practicing photography, whatever it is that you do, that is the way that the one moves through you. That is how the transcendence moves through you. Hello. I forgot to put my iPad on silent. So it might be dinging at me, but since most of my Words with Friends players are right here in this audience, <laughs> and I don't see them with their phones out, we're probably safe probably say. So, so when you think of frequencies of consciousness, there's a very easy way to think of it. Because the lower frequencies are the frequencies of heartbreak. They're the frequencies of discouragement, of poverty, of lack. And in this realm of consciousness, 
It's where life bats you around, where things happen to you, where you feel a victim to whatever's happening in life. And even though we don't want to stay there, most of us have experienced at least one or two moments in that place where life happens to us. We're not above it just because we're on the spiritual path. But as we grow in consciousness, we know that whatever consciousness we're seeing through, we're seeing with. And so when I'm coming from that place of feeling hurt, guess what happens? More hurt, more disappointment, more discouragement, more things to be angry about, more things to be upset about. Or I could lift into the next stage of consciousness where Things happen by me. Now, there are many of you who are a little controlling, and so you know how that happens. They happen by you, by your will, damn it. I'm going to get this to happen, and it's going to happen right now, right? Because I say so, and because my word is law. And that is true, but it's greater than that control. It's greater than saying it happens by means of me. Because when you say that, you're leaving out your biggest support, your silent partner. The presence and power of the divine, no matter what name you call it, whether you call it God, whether you call it Jesus, whether you call it Lord, whether you call it Buddha, Baha'u'llah, Ula, I'm quoting Daniel Maimad right now, what that, it is one power, no matter what. And so that's the third level of consciousness. That's the fr third frequency of consciousness when things happen through me. That's when I'm transcendent. And I'm transparent to that transcendence. That's actually what we're longing for. And then when we don't have to think about it anymore, it's the fourth level of consciousness. It happens as me. That one presence and I are so one that as Jesus says, as Jesus claimed, the Father and I are one. You can only see the Father by means of me, meaning his consciousness, the way he saw life. And that's what we're called to this Easter morning, not to <laughs> rejoice in the one miracle that happened over 2,000 years ago, but to ensure that that miracle is happening every moment of our life by being the place where heaven meets earth, by being that presence and that power. On uh, Wednesday's Wisdom, Reverend Bruce was talking about um, really using the law of mind, using the principle, and knowing that you can depend on it. And he said one of the ways that you can build that consciousness is through gratitude. It's one of the ways you can build this through me, as me consciousness, too. Because when I'm grateful, no matter what I'm grateful for, what I'm grateful for expands in my life. So what more good do you want today? What more do you want to see and experience? St. Augustine was quoted as saying that he had had visions of seeing the risen Christ. He had seen Christ, and he saw these visions um, very um, fully, like it felt like there was Jesus right there. And then they started to diminish and go away, and he heard, he heard the words, look in your heart, that's where you first found me. Look in your heart, that's where you first found me. Your connection to the divine happens, it's an inside job. You can come here to be inspired, but the shift in consciousness happens in you. It's a choice. You decide. You decide to have a greater experience of oneness with that thing that is transcendent. That thing that is God itself. And then not only is what you're looking at what you're looking with, but what you're yearning for is yearning for you. 
Have you ever thought of that? That presence of God within you is yearning for you to awaken to who you really are. What better day to do that than today? Choose the frequency of consciousness that is one with the divine. Let's give you a little Ernest Holmes here. Actually, I'm going to give you a little Ralph Waldo Emerson, whom Ernest quoted. My Ernest quote isn't exactly what I wanted to say at this point. Here's what Ralph Waldo Emerson said. He said, as there is no screen or ceiling between the heads and the infinite heavens, so there is no barrier wall in the soul where we, the effect, cease, and God, the cause, begins. Let me read it to you again. It's a very profound because we think we're separate from. And yet, we are that. He says, just as if there, are no, there is no screen or ceiling between our heads and the infinite heavens, so there is no barrier wall in the soul where we, the effect, cease, and God, the cause, begins. That God cause is right where you are. We were promised that in the twinkling of an eye, life can change. But it changes here. It's always from the inside out. Which frequency of consciousness are you choosing today? Is life happening to you? Is it happening by you? Or is it happening through you, as you? I have a story I'd like to share. I was listening to NPR yesterday. I was actually trying to listen to Garrison Keillor, which I still didn't get, but I was listening to a cooking show. And a man was talking about the, the, um, the week he'd had, the year he'd had. And he was saying how tough a year it had been and how things had broken down, et cetera, et cetera. And he, was, he said, and every time I had car issues, I was driving someone else's car. So this one story, he was driving someone's Jeep, and he stalled on the side of the road. Um, no, he had a flat tire, and he, he didn't have a jack in his Jeep. So people went past and went past and went past, almost three hours of people just going past, tow trucks even, going past, going past, and no one's stopping. He'd almost given up on the human race and was going to get out and walk somewhere, he had big signs in his windows, please stop, we need a jack. And this little car with six people in it stopped. Most of the people were children, a wife and a husband. And the man couldn't speak English at all, much at all. But he indicated that he would help. So he got out his little jack. He was in a little car. And the jack wasn't big enough for the Jeep. So he got his saw out of his car, and he went over to the side of the road, and he found a piece of wood that he could saw to make a level table to raise up the jack so it would be high enough. And he did that, and the, the storyteller was changing his tire. And what's it called? Wrench? What is it that they take the lug nuts off? Lug wrench. The lug wrench. Anyway, he was using it, and he was... And it was just a little one, and it broke. And so the man took it to his wife, who was still in their car, and she took it, went, came back with a new lug wrench, continued to fix the tire. He said to himself, I have to. He was the only one that stopped. I have to compensate this person. He gave him a $20 bill. A man absolutely refused. He gave it back to him. So he thought, well, I'll go to the wife. She'll take it. He goes to the wife, takes it, and he feels really good. He gets in his car. The little girl comes and says, Mr. Mister, are you hungry? He said, yes, as a matter of fact, I am. I've been sitting here for three hours. Here's a tamale for you, she says. And he opens the tamale and finds the $20 there. So he speeds up and says, please, please, 
please perfect war, take the twenty dollars. And he said the man in his most intense way, in other words, this was a really difficult phrase for him, because he was non English speaking, and he said, No. Today you, tomorrow me. We are one. Wow. Wow. So what here's what I know is and the man and his wife, he said, Well, I'll send them a gift. So he said to the little girl, What's your address? We live in Mexico. They were seasonal workers picking peaches. Now that three hours that he helped our friend cost him real money. Money that could have put food in their pockets, but there was no thought of not doing. There was no thought of not giving back. Today, you, tomorrow, me. That, to me, is the consciousness of as me, as me. So as you're moving through your Easter, and, and then the end of the story, the, the fellow said, then from then on in the next six months, he, he changed many tires. He gave many people rides. He even took a young girl to the airport 50 miles away from where he was because he was paying back. He was giving back. So. It's one of the ways that we can see, I am that that thou art. Thou art that that I am. Today, who do you choose to be? Which frequency of consciousness is yours? Make it the as. It's the truth of you. And so it is. onto the platform, the, the Jewel to Toad's Choir. Hello, there we go. Go talk fast, okay. <laughs> so, here we are again with a, with a fun song. Please, clap. when they start clapping, clap along with us on two and four. And, um, and we have two soloists in this song. We have Rick Dale and Dave Friedman ready to rock us. Here we go.
Anyone's visiting us for the very first time today, if you'd raise your hand, we have a gift for you. But keep your hand up until someone actually brings you something. So because we can't, so over here, a lot of people over here, Martha, on this side. A lot of people over here. Inside the, uh, inside the bag is some information about our center, a gift, and a welcome card. And down here at the front, Martha, right down here at the front. Peggy put her hand down and no one could see her. <laughs> right there, we're over here. Diane's family, Diane's sister is visiting. Yay! <laughs> Would like to. So inside the bag, there's also a welcome card, and if you fill that out and take it to the bookstore, you'll receive another gift of your choice. Let's welcome our visitors for being here this morning. So happy you joined us. And um, and. And we're about to uh, to do our offering to uh, our gifts and tithes. So where are the stewards? Come forward, please. Stewards, come forward, please. For the people who are visiting us, this is ours to do. We're so happy your your gift to us is your presence here. Unless you really know that giving is important, and then by all means, go ahead and give. I'm going to set the consciousness, which will include our prosperity affirmation. And this is what I know. I know that there is only one, and that one that is everywhere present, not only is all over the world, but is in this very room, in, as, and through everyone. It is the power of love, and it is right here. It is that trans transformational power that is moving through each one today, raising from the dead, bringing a new life, a life filled with good. I know that this is the truth and nothing but the truth that we say together. My offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply and symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply. Yes, no, good, okay. So we're going to uh, close today with something traditional, a little Beethoven, uh, the a glorious Ode to Joy from the Ninth Symphony, and we have a wonderful arrangement that features the jewel tones and then Wade Wooldridge doing a solo in the middle of it. So we hope you enjoy. Sing along if you know it.
joy surround the earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting a bird and a flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Acknowledge the Jewel Tones Choir once again, Wade Wildridge, Diane King Band, and our wonderful band. Wow. And then if the stewards would come back up, we're going to receive this offering together. And so you're going to repeat after me. Put your hands out so you can feel the energy coming into them. You'll understand when the when when anything and we're an energetic being. So whenever we are giving anything. We're exchanging energy. So please repeat after me. On behalf of my beloved center, I receive these gifts, knowing they bless everything they touch and return to every giver, multiplied, pressed down, and spilling over. And so it is. Thank you, Stuart. And I'm going to turn this over to Karen. And Reverend Karen. Flowers today are from Hans Smith to celebrate Darylin's birthday. Happy birthday, Darylin. <laughs> and next Sunday, Michael Gott. I don't know if you guys know Michael Gott. He's a fabulous singer, songwriter, minister. He's going to be here during the service, and also he's going to be um, facilitating a workshop after the service. So um, you want to stay, and if you are staying for that, we are going to provide lunch. 
for you. And if you could just bring some desserts, that would be great. I'll share. There, this Friday, there is a talent show at 7 o'clock. Come see the amazing talent your spiritual family has to share. Admission is free. Wednesday's Wisdom. This Wednesday is Judy Chapman, and she is sharing the one creative intelligence and child care is available on Wednesday night. Coming up May 23rd through 26th, the Lake Arrowhead Spring Weekend Retreat. For information and rates, please pick up the two-page flyer from the bookstore. And Conscious Connection, right here in the sanctuary. We are having it today, even though it's Easter, so it's um, from 12 to 12.30. And just share some some spiritual ideas. Um, Bedette Vanderweide and are you facilitating today? Okay. Well, just show up here at 12. Reverend Patty is going to be teaching an eight-week class, The Essential Earnest. This is an amazing class. Um, starts Monday at 7 in the sanctuary, and drop-ins are welcome. So next Tuesday, not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday, Dr. Heather is showing some movie trailers that are going to be, uh, not up there, but they're going to be um, submitted into a film festival uh, presented by the AGNT, Association for Global New Thought. So if you want to be a part of that and vote on which movies that you like the best, please show up here Tuesday the 29th at 7 o'clock. I'm going to Before we do that, just a reminder, anyone who bought Easter lilies, please take them home after the service. Mm -hmm. right. Amy, do we have slides? I'm hoping we have slides from some of the Gourmets for God parties last year. And we do. Yay. So, so Kim, look at this. Look at these amazing parties. Yes, I was at some of them. Who, who pays for the food? Who pays for the food? If you host a meal, you pay for the food. You just throw a party. You throw a party whatever way you like to throw a party. You and pay for it. And many, that is your donation to the church. How many people do I have to invite? <laughs> well, you can invite two people or you can invite 20 people. You can invite 100 people if that's the party you want to throw. I'm not a gourmet. That that piece that Grant there just looks fabulous. I'm not a gourmet. Is there anything else that I can do? Well, absolutely. You know, you throw the kind of party you want to throw. I know that you do a really mean chili, so you could do chili and cornbread. Okay. So if I wanted to, I could take quiche to the beach and have a brunch on the beach? Absolutely. That would be so much fun. How, how do people get tickets? Well, we're going to auction off the tickets in a silent auction. When does that start? That starts in a couple of weeks. And it's all done on paper. It, it takes place over a few weeks' time. So everybody has time to think about it and and uh, decide what they really want to bid on. So how many parties can I go to? You can go to as many parties as you want. You just have to buy tickets. <laughs> how much are they? <laughs> they are whatever whatever they end up selling for in the auction. So if it's... We start, we have a starting bid for every single dinner. So a dinner for, you know, an eight-course dinner for 10 might start at $35. But it might might end up selling for 50 a, a, t a ticket. But hot dogs at the beach for 50 people might start at 10 But imagine $10. If we sold 50 tickets for $10 to a hot dog party at the beach, that's $500 that goes directly to the church. That it's, sounds like fun. It's an amazing fundraiser, and it's so much fun. I know I eat out a lot, so I think what I'll do is save my budget for going to parties with all these wonderful people. That is such a great idea, and you can have your social calendar completely sewn up for like six months. When do they start? <laughs> it starts in June and goes all the way through December. We're going to have parties planned during all that time. Oh, will somebody have a New Year's Eve party? I hope so. I really hope so. So we have about 15 to 18 people who have already said that they want to host something. We need about 10 more. Come on, let's, let's have some parties. Let's have some fun. Thank you. I'm going to do the brunch on the beach. 